in Pennsylvania, wow. school counselor Kelly Ann Shute was accused of preying on a 14-year-old boy in his bedroom after his parents left the house. God Investigators damn. say the pair had inappropriate relations several times, including in her SUV and her home. Jeez. California teacher Michelle Sobe. Well, Sobeek goddamn, how many we got? Jeez. She just rolling them out. Yeah. Whoa. YouTube Town Family, what's the biz? Y'all already know what it is, man. Positive vibes all days, all ways. Y'all know how I'm rocking. And it ain't nothing to it but to do it. So we about to jump right into it. As always, I hope everybody feeling well out there today. And if you haven't already, please hit that like, share, subscribe, and notification button so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest content. You dig? You don't want to miss out, okay? And without further ado, any who, welcome to Tide Town. Yet another teacher is arrested for an alleged sexual relationship with a student. It's just one of many cases we've covered in recent weeks, highlighting a disturbing pattern emerging across the nation. This time, we're headed to Charlotte, North Carolina, where 26-year-old biology teacher Gabriella Newfeld oh, is accused Yum. of having sex with an 18-year-old student. These accusations Yum, all came to light on Wednesday. According to court documents, nice Newfeld engaged in intercourse or a sexual act at least five times since October 18th. Mm. While the interactions didn't happen at school, they allegedly happened with an 18-year-old male student. After an interview with police, Newfeld was arrested and booked into the Mecklenburg County Detention Center. She was later released on $75,000 bond. This power dynamic is one we've covered extensively I'm confused a little at Law bit. Crime Network as handfuls maybe, of maybe, cases maybe it's more to the story the here. The school year. But experts like forensic psychologist Dr. John Delatory say this shocking pattern has existed for years. In the 90s, they lie. The 70s, Listen, cat. They lie. This one going down. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> it wasn't going down like that when I was in school. At least the teachers weren't. They weren't doing this like that. Like now today, this nah. I mean, I I, I see how they saying this going down, but to me, like we always joke when we hear these stories. Like man, they wouldn't do it. That like nah. I mean, I ain't All saying these it. These things were These things have been happening since there was a teacher and there was a student. Right, so from it seemed like it's time, more like it's a like this have been occurring, but the technology frequent thing. wasn't there to engage in these kinds of things. And so true current, like in contemporary times, having an online relationship and having an offline relationship are almost the same thing. And so you can engage yeah, in these that, that is another sexes, advantage, I guess, too. Uh, sexual text videos, images being sent to one another. He says the inappropriate relationships start normally with a student-teacher dynamic. It's a gradual shift into something much darker. It is a pretty big jump, and it's, it's a jump that actually happens over time, right? It's not mm. one single jump. It's one little tiny little hop from one step to the next. Now, remember, some individuals actually do get sexual gratification from engaging in this behavior. So part mm. of the... The, the thought process is also coupled with a physical gratification that the person is receiving from engaging in this behavior. It's also psychological in that they're getting attention from the victim. So there's a lot of dynamics that are, that are at play when it comes to convincing the person that what they are doing is the right thing. They always know that it's wrong. They've always known and they always will know that the behavior is wrong. Hmm. They just don't care anymore. And it's that careless nature that we've seen much of in recent months. We've covered the story of Peyton Shires, the 24-year-old social worker now accused of having sex with a boy she'd been assigned to counsel. Authorities in Ohio no, no, that's Shires foul. recorded videos of herself having sex with a boy. Investigators found that evidence on the boy's phone, and Shires admitted to the relationship that's while she was crazy. on the phone with his mom. At the same time, police were listening in. She's now charged with unlawful sexual contact with a minor. Mm. In the case of Ricky Lynn Laughlin, it's attempted rape that put the one-time Missouri teacher in the headlines. 
Investigators say she invited a 16-year-old student to have sex with her while her husband was out of the home. In Pennsylvania, wow. school counselor Kelly Ann Shute was accused of preying on a 14-year-old boy in his bedroom after his parents left the house. God Investigators damn. say the pair had inappropriate relations several times, including in her SUV and her home. Jeez. California teacher Michelle Sobe... Well, goddamn, how many we got? Jeez. She just rolling them out. You get a teacher. You get a teacher. You get a teacher. <laughs> this is crazy. Sexual relationship with a former student and sending explicit photos. 27-year-old... Listen, I promise you, like, I went... When I was in school, this was not a thing. Like, we weren't focused, like... And I don't know. The teachers weren't that fine. No offense, but... And you look how young these teachers are. Teachers weren't that young. They weren't that good looking. And I'm not saying they were, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, like, these teachers look like, you know, they, they dress in a little, you know what I mean? I, I see the viral teacher pictures and videos that go around. And I even be saying myself, like, yeah, we didn't, we didn't have teachers like that. We didn't. Y'all know. Like, so it, I, I can understand it made me think like, well, if we did, but I don't, I don't know. We was just on, I don't know. We, I, like I said, man, we was, we was, I was, we was on different stuff, you know. It wasn't teachers necessarily. They was the ones catching us doing stuff all the time. It wasn't no sexual, like, um, feelings there. And I guess because, like I said, they wasn't looking like this at least, you know. So it I don't know. Resigned from her teaching it's job crazy. in Missouri after explicit photos she took made the rounds between students. She's also accused of sexual assault. As is Cassidy Krause of Iowa, <coughs> who allegedly sent explicit photos and had sexual relations with three boys ages 13 and 14. Then there's the case of Alyssa McCommon, a Tennessee teacher who's allegedly pregnant with her former student's child. Just this week, McCommon's bond was revoked following her second arrest. She faces charges of rape, coercion of a witness, aggravated stalking, and harassment. Mm. She was arrested in early September for allegedly raping a boy in her own home. She was released on bond, but arrested again. Yo, she let's, let, me, let me point something out. These have all been women. These have all been women, by the way. And that surprised me, because I was just speaking about that the other day, about like... Um, how women rape isn't spoke of enough because it happens. And I think it, it, you know, when it happens to guys, it's a more of a, like a manly thing. Not to, they feel embarrassed to talk about it, but it happens no matter what age, you know what I mean? But it happens. I was literally just, I just had this conversation. So that was crazy to hear that. And, um, what y'all wilding y'all horny, bro. Like that's nasty. He reached out to the victim <laughs> after her release, saying she was pregnant with his child. At a hearing this week, a judge ruled McCommon will remain in jail as she awaits trial. It's the disturbing nature of these cases that That's continues crazy. to generate interest. So we're she taking a pregnant closer too? look now at the most recent one. Yeah, Gabrielle now this one right here. So I'm, I'm, I want to see what they say because I'm trying to see what is the problem that. Is the problem or the the uh, issue is um? Dang, what I want to say? They start naming off these other ones, man. I wasn't ready for that. I thought she, they start naming them off, but I thought uh, cause they said he's eighteen, so that's a legal age. So I was like, okay, that's okay. And they said that uh, the sexual encounters didn't happen on campus. So I mean, at that point, ain't it just like a you know what I mean? I, I guess you could look at it in a like more of a moral sense, I, I I see where that's coming from. But where was the like? I don't get it. Makes sense I'm the trying case to understand. so far. We're joined now by long crime legal analyst Julie Rendelman. Julie, the you. other ones they foul. I, they foul. They 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 out okay, of pocket. Okay, so what struck me about this case and is what separates it from so many of the others like it is that the student in this one is 18 years old, so a legal adult. But Newfeld was still arrested and charged. Can you explain that? Sure. So what we've that's typically what about, been seeing see. um, is where a teacher engages in some type of sexual activity with a student that's also underage. 
Um, this is unique because the student is 18 years old, um, and so he is of age. However, the law is quite clear uh, in North Carolina. Um, mm. And in this case, um, the, the crime is called sexual activity with a student. And what that says is that mm. an individual um, who, who is a teacher, who is over four years, um, who is four years older than their student, which in this case, um, the victim was 18, um, and the teacher was, I believe, 26 years of age. Um, the law prohibits any type of sexual activity um, between the two. She now faces five counts of sexual Well, there you go. And it's different. You know, it's, that's why it's important to know about law. I always talk about that, you know. Always understand your law about things you're getting into. Not necessarily, I've never talked about this necessarily, but you know, things that, you know, I always talk about that. You know, that's why I don't necessarily like to travel a lot to different places because I'm big on like wanting to know what the law is. Okay, we going here. What is the law there? And again, I'm not speaking on this particular thing, but I, that's a law there because I was trying to figure out where, where was the issue. But she just explained, you know, where they're at. That's where the legal um, charge that you just explained. But is that problem. different than rape? Is it less severe? It is less severe. Um, it, it, it's still a felony. Um, they classify it in that state as a G felony. Mm. Um, the difference is the amount of time an individual um, can get if in that's fact crazy. Guilty. I'm not in gonna lie, because I can imagine this. like. They probably thought they weren't doing nothing wrong. Like, because who would think that, like, like I said, he's 18. That's why I was like, what's the problem? I mean, he's legal age. Like I say, morally, you can just be like, that's wrong because you're a teacher, his teacher. I get it, right? But I didn't see an issue there. But that's a law there. Like, and they probably didn't think, you know, to think like, yo, let's check on the the law. about You know what I mean? Like, they probably didn't even, they probably didn't uh, think they the were doing that wrong as far as age and stuff like that. 47 months, um, whereas in uh, the typical cases we would see, you would have an expectation that the potential for imprisonment is much higher. Hmm. It sounds like a lot of this case is going to rely on what this 18-year-old student has to say. Would you hmm. say that he would need to testify? You would expect that he will. Now, keep in mind, there might what, be... What, like it was forced or something? ...that he told what happened. There might be witnesses. It's, we expect that when an individual is raped, that it's done in a private location, but you never know what the evidence is going to yield. There may be, um, which we don't know yet, there might be texts, there might be videos, there might be emails that don't require him to necessarily testify. Mm. Keep in mind that no matter what his age is, if it's a student and it's a teacher and there is an age difference between at least four years, consent is irrelevant uh, to this charge. What mm -hmm. happens if this 18 year old is not cooperative and he doesn't want to testify at all? I know that you mentioned he doesn't necessarily need to, but do prosecutors need his cooperation to move forward? I think any time you have a case, particularly where it's um, involving two individuals, um, it is important for the prosecution to have the victim on board. Um, that doesn't always mean they're always on board. <laughs> yeah. uh, can the prosecution go forward without that person? Well, they can certainly subpoena them to testify and require them to, um, or they can potentially see if there's other evidence besides what the victim would have to say that can support um, any type of charge against the teacher regarding what happened with the student. Mm -hmm. Now, from the prosecution over to the defense side, if we're looking That's at the crazy. defendant in this case, I Gabriella to Neufeld, you. what could her defense look like? How would she combat these five charges? Yeah, that's what I'm curious so, of. It's so early on in the, uh, in, the, in the stage, at least from the knowledge we have. So we don't know how strong their case is. We don't know if the victim is cooperating. We don't know if someone else came forward to say what happens in the victims like I, I don't want to be involved hmm. and so from the defense perspective of course their best position would be if the if the victim does not want to cooperate their best position would be if there are no texts there are no emails and if the texts are potentially innocuous they might argue that this was just a flirtation and this was nothing more than that and didn't rise to the level of a felony mm-hmm could it be in Newfeld's best interest to take a plea deal rather than go to trial with this case? 
So Sarah, it's so early to even think about that. And again, we don't know what the defense knows. And quite frankly, the defense may not know what the prosecution knows right now. So it's, it's so early um, in the arrest. It's so early in the investigation. Um, obviously, when someone decides that they're going to take a plea, um, the reason they take a plea is if they think that what's being offered is better um, if they were then if they were to go to trial and lose. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's going to take a bit of time and really for the defense to see how strong the evidence is. And also, if there's any mitigation, does the defendant have mental health issues? Um, are there anything that would somehow uh, lessen the blow of, 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 quite frankly, what many consider a, quite a horrific crime? And we're talking about how recently this investigation began. It was just this week that these allegations came to light and that Newfeld had this interview with police. So I'm wondering, mm-hmm. as the investigation moves forward, we're not even a week out. Is it possible that investigators will go back and look at her relationship with other students and that others may come forward? Anytime you have any type of sex crime, whether it be student to teacher or any other uh, scenario, you're, the police are going to be looking not just at the relationship between those two, but the relationship between the teacher and any other potential students that that may raise some red flags. So certainly um, they're, they're going to want to do that in this case. Look, you know, any time a teacher has a relationship like this with the student, boundaries have clearly been crossed. Um, and if they're willing to do it once, Uh, they potentially are willing to do it multiple times. In this case, we know that bond was set at $75,000. Do you think that that's an appropriate amount? Anytime bail or bond is set, the judge has many factors to consider, and one of them is the flight risk of the individual. Mm. Um, And so, you know, this is an individual who I believe was part of the community. She's presumed innocent at this stage. And so I don't think it's unusual uh, for an individual who is a member of the community, who has ties to the community um, and has no real basis or belief on the part of the judge that they're going to flee, that they're going to set an amount that would guarantee they return to court, but not require them to remain incarcerated. Yeah. Julie Rendleman, thank you as always for joining us and bringing us more information about this case. Thank you for having me, Sarah. We will continue to cover Neufeld's case as it moves forward in legal proceedings, bringing you the latest updates in this and all other cases like it. Reporting for Law & Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie. That's crazy. I just... (laughs) You know, the first case, like I said, that's unfortunate because to me, they were probably thinking that they weren't doing nothing wrong considering the fact that the young fellow was 18 years of age, which is considered an adult um, just about anywhere, I believe, yeah, right? So he was an adult. I mean, they mentioned that none of the sexual, uh, you know, or their whatever doings was done on campus, it was pretty much in their own private capacity. So that I don't see no issue with that. But then you get to their laws. And I speak about that all the time, man. That's why it's important to study laws, you know, because it's, it's, you just never know when you're breaking them. You can be thinking you're doing something right the whole time and you're actually breaking a law. And I mean, I've seen people get locked up for things innocently just because they just don't know the law. And that's just if you're engaging in certain things. I don't mean, I mean, you should know law anyway, but I mean, if, if you're going to engage in certain things, maybe that should be probably one of the first thing you do, right? Like if you decide to have a relationship with the student, maybe you should, <laughs> I'm not recommending, uh, recommending that, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, you know, that seems like what got her caught up there, them. Now, for the other cases that they start just firing off off the back, that's crazy. That old, now, they should be ashamed of themselves for sure, for sure. Like, n- without a doubt. Like, that's crazy. I mean, like I said, you can't condone it. it, it that love, that, that it's a, you know, you got to study that. Like I said, they, they had a... Um, a guy there, I, I heard talking, it seems like that was his specialty. It made me want to, you know, study it out a little more myself and see the connection between that because, I don't know, like I said, again, back in my, when I was in, you know, that grade and that age, that nest, that wasn't going around, I'll be honest. Like, we didn't, first of all, we didn't have teachers that looked that, you know, these teachers look, you know, different nowadays. We didn't, we didn't have, you may have one or two, you know what I mean, that was like, hey, you seen Miss Banks, you know? 
or whoever. And um and that was, you know what I mean, but we it wasn't like that, bro. Like at least not for me. I wasn't worried about that, you know what I mean? I was not that. Like it just, you know, so like I say that and it's it's out there. Again, it's out there. It's crazy. But hey, man, Y'all already know how it go. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Hey, man, I want to appreciate everybody for tuning in. Another one, Todd Town. Another great one, man. As always, all the love and the support. My team, everyone. I really do appreciate everybody. It's always fun. And until next time, peace. Yeah. Whoa.